the perfect cast. The perfect what? The perfect cast. A man that can do anything that he puts his mind to without a flaw. Nobody's beaten me. I have no flaws. I have no blemishes. Ah! See, from head to toe and in the mind, I am absolutely perfect. With no flaws, no blemishes. Just another day in a perfect life. Ha <laughs> ha, yes! Welcome, everybody, to the inaugural episode of The Perfect Cast. This is The Perfect Podcast with the perfect host, myself, all about the perfect topic, also myself. You know, people, I've been wanting to do this podcast for a long time. This has been an idea in the back of my mind for quite some time now, and the only thing that was stopping me from making it was I just couldn't decide. I just couldn't decide whether or not I wanted this to be on my channel or on the designated podcast channel, The Procrastinators. But that decision has been made. Because I got a lot on my mind right now, and I wanted to do this right now. I was in a podcasting mood. I'm a spontaneous guy, people. I do things on a whim. I plan, and I plot, and I scheme. And I'm always ten steps ahead of myself. But all the same, I always leave a little bit of wiggle room in my life. Because I'm a guy who gets ideas and likes to act on those ideas. I don't fuck around, people. I don't dilly-dally or shilly-shally. I'm a doer, not a talker. I'm a talker and a doer. I'm the total package, baby. I talk the talk and walk the walk. I got the gift of gab and I slip the jab. What the fuck? Point is, I like to do things right now on my time, right at this very moment, on a whim. Which means that it had to be on my channel and not the procrastinators, because right now, at this moment, I am not technically a member of the procrastinators. Well, I guess I'm still technically a member, but I'm not on the clock. I blew that popsicle stand. I took my ball and went home, as Vince McMahon would say. I'm on me time right now. I'm taking a break from the boys. I'm on a vacation from the procrastination. I'm in the Bahamas, baby. The basement Bahamas. Taking care of business and taking it easy for all you sinners out there. Swig a tea for the working man. Oh, that's warm tea. That's been sitting there for a while. I haven't been on the podcast lately. I haven't even really showed up in the group chat lately. I've dropped in here or there, but for the most part, I've been MIA. And... For a lot of reasons. Honestly, you know, I've been wanting to get on my motorcycle and leave the X-Mansion. Go find myself in Canada for a while now. I'm a stray, baby. You know that. No regrets, cause I got nothing to lose! Ever stray! So I'm gonna live my life as I choose! Until I fall! Anyways, point is, I'm just too powerful to be contained by any one silly little group chat. And like I said, there's a lot of reasons why I decided to take a little break from the procrastinators. One of those reasons being that I hate them. But that's far from the only reason. There's a lot. People, life is about more than hanging around in a cynical little group chat every day, arguing about stupid, pointless bullshit and complaining about what YouTubers you hate this week. Life is about adventure. And I'm all about adventure, people. It's the summertime, baby. The most busy time of the year for me, because I live up in the north where the snow is alabaster, up beyond the wall, where everybody lives in their fucking holes like voles nine months out of the fucking year. So when the sun comes out in the summertime, life gets busy up here in the white lands of Empathica. This is the time when everybody wants to hang out. This is the time when everybody wants to party and revel and live and experience the youth while they still have it in the palm of their hands before it slips through their fingers like sands through the hourglass. These are the days of our lives. That's the lesson that you learn living up here in Frizzy Peak. So I've been busy, people. I've been walking the earth. I've been experiencing all kinds of new experiences. I've been living life. I've been having adventures. I have so many adventures. I have so many stories to tell everybody. I have so many escapades. So many episodes. So many tales to astonish. 
Never a dull moment in the life and times of the Endless One, people. And I got a lot to talk about. I got a lot to get off my chest. I got a lot to say. And this is a damn fine outlet for me to spew the bullshit off my brain, as Stone Cold Steve Austin would say. Get on with it. Yes, get on with it. On to the podcast. It's the perfect case, the perfect case, the perfect fucking case. Woo! We all live in a Pokemon world. I wanna be the greatest master of them all. I gotta talk about Pokemon Go because, holy shit, I am in a state of awe right now. I'm just in a state of shock and amazement. I'm astonished. My fucking wig is blown back. My pants have flown off into the stratosphere and burst into the sky like 4th of July fireworks, making it rain all my dollar dollar bills on all the fine booty bitches. I can't believe it. I'm in awe of what is happening to my country right now. This wave of nostalgic jubilation that has swept the nation. Every fucking day now is a Pokemon vacation! We all live in a Pokemon world! I wanna be the greatest master of them all! This is the most amazing thing that's ever happened. Like, I know everybody's talking about Pokemon Go right now, but I wonder if anyone's actually stopping and thinking about what is actually happening. We have turned the real world into the Pokemon world. The, the cartoon, fictionalized video game world that I grew up on, it's real now. We have made fiction real. You fucking go outside and there are actual Pokemon trainers in the tall grass waiting for you and they see you and you lock eyes and they want to talk to you and and battle and, and trade pokemon and talk about pokemon this is uh, this is fucking amazing this is real life this is actually real life in 2016 it, it's like all of my, my my entire existence has been has been building towards this and i want in i want in on this now i don't have a phone i don't i, have, I haven't had a phone in a long time i'm buying a fucking phone tomorrow I don't care if this is like a fad or, you know, if, it, if it's going to die out after two weeks. I don't care. I want in on it while it lasts. I'm going and I'm buying the most expensive fucking phone I can because I want the best Pokemon Go experience possible. And as long as this wild ride is chugging along at full speed, I'm going to ride it, baby. I'm going to ride this poo-poo train all the way to the toilet. I'm going to be a real Pokemon trainer and nobody's going to fucking stop me. I don't want to hear any fucking naysayers or contrarians turning up their noses at what is the most exciting thing that has ever happened in the history of mankind. This is the best thing ever. It's, it's the best fucking development in gaming in, in like in, in at least like 15 years. Easily. I mean... Even just looking at it as a gamer, this fucking phenomenon that's going on of people walking around in the real world, catching Pokemon in the real world, fucking going outside and congregating in, in the fucking streets and, and catching Pidgeys and Caterpies and shit. Think about that just in terms of gaming. Think about like when you were a little five-year-old kid trying to imagine what video games would be like when you were an adult, how advanced they would be. How they would, you know, you, you'd, you'd, you'd always imagine, like, some virtual reality shit. Some fucking, like, weird polygonal lawnmower man world. Or, like, that Treehouse of Horror episode where Homer went through the wall into the fucking uh, video gamey computer world and he was three-dimensional. You'd imagine that when you grew up, everything would be a video game. That by the year 2000, the whole world would just be Donkey Kong all the time. You'd walk around with a fucking NES zapper shooting actual duck hunt ducks as they fly out from the bushes. Everybody as a little kid in like the early 90s had those wild dreams of like the future of video games. And what happened? Video games disappointed us, didn't they? They fucking failed to meet those expectations. They underdelivered. They squandered their potential. They focused in all the wrong directions. They fucking... You know, they, they became about fucking 
uh, bloated stories and, and cutscenes and, and, and DLC and all of this other bullshit. They strayed from the path. Everybody except Nintendo, that is. Nintendo has continued to make great games. They're the best company. They're the best guys ever. They're fucking geniuses. They make my dick rock hard. But video games as a whole have been stagnant for like 15 years. There's been no real perceivable sense of advancement for video games. In fact, if anything, it seems like video games are like devolving. You play the new Metal Gear Solid, and it's just this giant, bloated, boring, sloppy, unfinished clusterfuck of smoldering ass. And then you go back and you play the original Metal Gear Solid from like 17 years ago, and it's still a fucking masterpiece that's fun as hell to play to this day. It's got a great story, it's got great characters, it's got great gameplay, it's got a great setting, it's got great everything. It's fucking great. Metal Gear Solid 1 is awesome. And they ruined it. Kojima blew it. He blew it all sky high. He killed his own creation. He injected his own creation with a lethal dose of poison. And it's all because of this bizarre direction that video games have devolved in over the last 15 years. These weird design sensibilities that are only there to make the journalists ooh and ah, and that nobody actually finds fun or entertaining or interesting in the slightest. A fucking giant, a, a 50 mile radius, empty fucking desert, where instead of just getting to the fucking point, you have to ride on horseback for 40 days and 40 nights like fucking Moses. Also, you can get to the end and listen to a shitty cassette tape of Queefer Sleepy Man telling you that nothing happened of any importance and it was all meaningless. Wow, 10 out of 10. <laughs> Citizen Kane. Video games have just turned into shit. They've turned to shit and they haven't been evolving in any real, noticeable, meaningful capacity. The last serious leap forward for video games was like the PlayStation 1 to the PlayStation 2. And then I guess maybe the PlayStation 3 was a big leap too, but I mean like, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, fucking PC, everything's the fucking same now. Graphics are not getting any better. Frame rates are not getting any better. You know, none of this shit is getting any better. It's, it's, we've, we've reached like a peak. We've reached a zenith of how like graphically impressive this shit can be. We've reached a zenith of like the big, holy shit, mind-blowing killer app fucking... Video game, video games. The video game industry has just turned into a bunch of guys waving their dicks around. Everybody wants their game to be the biggest, but nobody's innovating, nobody's thinking outside of the box, except for fucking Nintendo, baby. Crapping out revolutionary shit left and right without even thinking about it and giving it to the people for free. Because they just want us to have fun. They just want us to have a good time. They just want the world to join hands and, and fucking praise... Uh, uh, the fucking... The Triforce, I guess. <laughs> but this fucking Pokemon Go shit... This is like the first thing in 15 years that has actually felt like video games have evolved. Like, the future of gaming has finally arrived. Long overdue, but it's finally arrived. And of course, it was Nintendo that did it. Nintendo that saved us all, like they always have been. Everybody always loses faith in Nintendo. Everybody everybody thinks, oh, N Nintendo only makes gimmicky systems and, and no, they're, the graphics, they're, they're always underpowered to consoles. Who gives a shit? Nintendo was always at the forefront. Nintendo was the fucking kings. They're the master and commanders. They're the chairman of the motherfucking board. The head honcho, big cheese, baby. They're fucking kings. They're geniuses. I mean, think about just how genius the marketing for it alone is. Think about the fact that it's just... From what I've seen, just the original Gen 1 Pokemon. Just the original 150. That's fucking genius. They knew exactly who they needed the fucking market to, didn't they? They said, okay, we're, this isn't just going to be some regular, you know, a, a, another Pokemon for the, for the kids to play. This is going to be a fucking revolution. We're going to take over the fucking world. I want everybody playing this game. So we're just going to use the Pokemon that everybody knows and everybody remembers. The fucking, the, 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 you know, the guy, the people in their 20s remember them. Their parents remember them. Mwah. That's, I, that's the taste of genius. I fucking, I savor the succulent taste of, of great minds. Because they think alike, we think alike. Because I'm smart. That's why I believe in smart. I can taste their brains over the brain waves. I'm an ant. I have, I'm a, I'm a, I'm an, I'm a formic. 
I'm an alien bug. I've got antenna. I am not a human. I'm not a human being. But my point is, it's just the original 150 Pokemon, and that's fucking brilliant! That's what's luring in the fucking nostalgia bucks, you know? But it's not just people from my generation. It's not just nostalgic millennials. It's their parents, too. Fucking old people are playing this because Nintendo always knows what to do. They always know how to get everybody in on a fucking phenomenon. They're fucking geniuses. They're kings. They're the saviors of all mankind. They're making the world a better place. They're making everybody happier. They're the fucking promised ones. Nintendo is the fucking Lord of Light. Iwata is gonna come back from the dead with a flaming sword and, 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 and drive back the White Walkers. It's gonna be Iwata, Miyamoto, and Princess Peach in a cat suit, swooping down on three Charizards, laying waste to the forces of evil, burning the countryside, conquering nations, vanquishing evil, and uniting the world for all mankind. People are gonna come together. It's going to be a glorious new age, a new age of Pokemon, a new age of positivity and camaraderie and companionship, a new day. It's a new day! Yes, it is! Put your hands together and feel the power! How much do you want to bet that fucking Xavier Woods comes out on Raw and cuts a Pokemon Go promo? This is what it's all been about, people. This is what it, this is what our lives have been for all this time. It's all been for this moment. Fuck anyone who says that this is gonna, like, die out in two weeks. I hope it never dies out. I hope this lasts forever because this is incredible. The world has color again. I, I'm like, I'm, I'm like, in a, a, a fucking, a fucking I, I feel the magic of, of childhood wonder for the first time in 170 fucking years. It sounds like I'm joking. It sounds like I'm being hyperbolic or just saying, you know, ridiculous shit. But I legitimately believe, I, I, I legitimately feel like <laughs> this country has been a better place the last couple of days since Pokemon Go came out. I think that this fucking app has been, like, the cure for what ails us in this time of great civil unrest. I mean, you've got, like, racial tension flaring up, you've got class warfare, riots all the time, people shooting each other, cops executing poor people in the street. Well, they've always done that, but cops getting caught on camera, executing people in the street, people, you know, snipers shooting cops, horrible atrocities happening all over, you know, everybody's fucking sad, everybody's freaking out. You know, maybe there's like a sociological effect going on right now where because of all this civil unrest, everybody just wants to be a fucking child again and, and, and the perfect app came out at the perfect time. Just the perfect storm of events, you know? Like one day, there's a horrible atrocity, a horrible shooting, and then the next day, Pokemon Go comes out to fucking relieve all that tension and, and, and make us, you know, remind us of the, of, of the joys in life. I mean, it's not that... Amazing of a coincidence when there's a mass shooting every single fucking day, but I mean... <laughs> but my point is, we're living in exciting times. We're living in scary times. Everybody's constantly on edge. There's always a fucking tragedy. The news is, you know, atrocities and murder and death and sadness 24-7. It's all anyone fucking sees. Everybody's sad. America is in a constant state of grieving. We've got, like, the most corrupt election ever between, like, the two worst people in history. Everybody's fucking waking up to how fucked we are. Everybody's divided. Everybody's, you know... It's a bad scene, man. It's a, it's a real bad scene right now, at this moment in time. And everybody needs a fucking distraction. Everybody needs just something pure and good and wholesome to take us away from all that, to give us a fucking break from it. You know, we're all so divided, and, and we, needed, we needed that one thing that we all have in common. That one thing that can bring us all together. Even if it's just for a brief time, even if it's only a two-week fucking fad. And you try to think, what's the one thing that everybody has in common? Holy shit, it's fucking Pokemon. Everybody loves Pokemon. There's two things that everybody in this country has in common. Everybody knows Pokemon, and everybody has a cell phone. And we are all just sitting here, reading the news, reading our Twitters, every week, another fucking tragedy somewhere, and we're all just thinking the same thing. What's it gonna take to bring us together? 
And then down the fucking chimney comes old Saint Nintendo. Ho, 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 with a big red sack full of Pokemon. Our saviors, the prince who was promised, descending from on high, descending from Valhalla, on a flaming Rapidash, to make America great again. And that's exactly what they've done. Nintendo, for however brief of a window of time this is, Nintendo has made America great again. Don't look to Donald Trump for the answers. Don't look to any fucking political blowhard. Look to the people who have been there for you your entire life. Always in the background. Always cheering you on. Nintendo. You might have stopped believing in them. But they never stopped believing in you. And in our darkest hour, they have returned to us bringing with them the forgotten treasures of our childhood to remind us all of what's really real and what's truly true, to remind us all of the real America. And let me tell you, people, this is the real America right now. I saw the real America tonight. I went out and I walked the streets, and what I saw... (sighs) brings a tear to my eye. I think I feel a tear falling from my other eye. Oh, I'm gonna cry like a man, cry like as hard as I can, as I can. So I went out on my nightly journey that I go out on most nights. I, I go and I walk around the city. I usually end up going down the same route just through the downtown area. It's it's about a mile walk and then back. Sometimes I I take a little twist or a turn and I go through the parks and through all the little nooks and crannies of the city that only I know because I live here. I just go out and I fucking, you know, just I go for a walk sometimes. It's fucking cool, whatever. I'm a fucking night owl. I'm a fucking hoot hoot. And when I go out for these walks at night, the city is abandoned. It becomes a fucking ghost town. My city is not a bustling center of culture. It's not a sprawling metropolis full of people every night. I'm sort of out in the boonies. There's there's nobody around here. So when you go out late at night and and walk down that downtown area, it's totally empty every time. It's a fucking ghost town. It was not a ghost town tonight. I will tell you what. This was like the most surreal thing I've ever fucking seen. There were more fucking people out there than I usually see in the daytime. And I counted them. I counted how many people that I saw playing Pokemon Go. 67 fucking people I counted walking the streets at night looking for Pokemon. I couldn't believe it. That's why I said I'm in awe. 67. 67 people and one skunk. The skunk was not playing Pokemon Go. But he would have been if skunks were allowed to have cell phones which they are not, ever since the Great Skunk Act of 1925. Otherwise, I'm 90% sure that Skunk, if he were allowed to, would have been playing Pokemon on his fucking cell phone like everybody else. Of this, I am sure. I love Skunks. I want a Skunk. I want to get one. You can get them. You can get... You can raise a pet Skunk. You can get, like, their stinky glands removed. And then they basically just become cats. It's like... That's why Pepe Le Pew was always trying to rape that... That cat, of course, is probably fucking illegal in half the states in this fucking country. Some goofy law that some idiot came up with. Probably some addendum or clause in the Great Skunk Act of 1925 that that says that not only are skunks not allowed to have cell phones, you're also not allowed to have a skunk of your own for some goofy reason. Some idiot, some anti-skunkite way back in the turn of the century who had some long-standing grudge against skunks because he got sprayed by one when he was a kid and had to take a bath in tomato juice. Like fucking Chucky on the Rugrats. Chucky Finster. A little geek. Oh, I don't know if this is a good idea, Tommy. I'm Chucky Finster. I suck the most dicks. I suck the most dicks! Angelica Pickles, you might be a hearty little slut, but nobody sucks as much dicks as me. I'm Chucky Finster, goddammit. But don't give me any shit or I'll fucking smack you. I'll smack you too, Lil. 
I beat women. That's what my daddy taught me when he killed my mom. He keeps her bones in the attic. He thinks I don't know, but I know. Chucky Fister sees all. Anyways, point is, holy shit, there were a lot of fucking people out playing Pokemon at night all throughout the city. Bunch of, bunch of damn night crawlers, worming around, catching Weedles, man. It was fucking surreal. It, it felt like stepping into a painting. I was like walking around in this dreamlike haze. Like, this can't be real. I've stepped into the world of Pokemon. You know, I'm expecting my typical quiet fucking journey into myself. Just walking through the empty streets like I own the place. Thinking about stuff. Enjoying the silence. All of a sudden, I get outside. And it's like it's fucking Halloween or something. There's all these lunacentric lunatics walking around. Catching Pokemon. Congregating in their little groups at like one in the morning, like old school Halloween, back when you were still allowed to go outside at night, back before they made it into a namby pamby daytime activity for retarded children who are all on Ritalin and wearing helmets and not allowed to have fun. But yeah, there were fucking Pokemon trainers everywhere, and not just in the city part, not just like on the street to the sidewalk or the downtown area, I'm talking about all over the fucking place. I'm talking about, like, in the nooks and crannies of the city, like in the parks and the paths, or, like, the, the fucking grasslands, or, like, down by the, by the creeks, and, like, through the woods, where it's, like, pitch dark, and all of a sudden you'd see the fucking light from somebody's phone over in a gazebo somewhere, or over in the middle of the pitch blackness next to the fucking river, looking for a goddang old polywhirl, hanging out in the woods trying to catch a manky. It was amazing, dude. I've never seen the city so alive, especially at nighttime. It was like a spiritual experience walking around and seeing all these people, like, exploring and interacting with each other. Everybody was fucking talking. Like, there were some people who I would see playing Pokemon Go, like, off alone in a corner or on a bench somewhere, off by themselves, and that was cool. But then there would be people that I would see together talking who... You know, some of them might have come out together to hunt for Pokemon together, which by that, that's already awesome. But then some of them might have just met up or like met each other as Pokemon hunters. Like people are meeting each other and like forging friendships. And I know that that's true because I saw one group of like at least 20 to 25 fucking people all congregating in, in like the town square, like in the downtown area. And there were cars parked and people were sitting in the cars and there were like a bunch of, there was like 25 fucking people standing around in this huge congregation. It's like when you go to a convention and like the convention takes over the city and, and you walk around and there's all these fucking freaks and cosplays walking around. There was one motherfucker in a full Ash Ketchum cosplay. I swear to God, these people were fucking... <laughs> It was fucking incredible. And there were like roaming gangs of like four to five people all over the city <laughs> fucking hunting Pokemon. I can't, this, is the fucking, this is the fucking greatest thing that's ever happened in the history of mankind. I can't fucking believe it. There's like impromptu parties on the fucking empty streets of the city. People are gathering fucking Pokemon trainers are gathering in real life. Doing Pokemon shit. <laughs> oh my god. I saw a fucking guy and a girl down by the river. <laughs> probably probably catching Goldines. Goldine Goldeen. <laughs> Oh my god. And now we'd go down to the river. We're into the river we dive. Down to the river we run. It was the most romantic fucking thing I've ever seen in my life. Everybody should fucking aspire to have that relationship. I swear to God, man, Nintendo is making 
America a better place. They're <laughs> improving the world in which we live. I'm seeing fucking people, you know, just going outside and exploring and, 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 and interacting with each other. That is, that alone is the most, this, this is like, an, this is a social revolution, this fucking app. This fucking Pokemon game. The Pokemon franchise has finally fulfilled its ultimate destiny and brought the entire world together in harmony. It's beautiful. All these fucking nerds getting out of their houses, fucking making friends. You know what I want to do is I want to go out with my fucking camera and I want to start, I want to go full like gonzo journalist and ingratiate myself into this burgeoning new subculture of fucking Pokemon trainers. And I want to interview people. You can call me Hunter S. Totodile. Oh, God. You know what this is? This is like the last hurrah for Generation Y. Like, we're all in our mid to late 20s. We're about to be 30. We're all fucking terrified. You know, we, we, we've all got these adult problems. We can't fucking pay our bills. We've got college debt. Can't find work. Losing our hair. Our tits are sagging. Like, we can see the end of our youth approaching. And if we're gonna go out, by God, we're gonna go out catching Pokemon. It's like one of those things that makes me like absurdly proud of my generation in like an abstract way. <laughs> Cuz it's so it's so like uniquely my generation. We will not go quietly into adulthood. We will go <laughs> kicking and screaming and dragging our feet trying to catch a fucking diglet. That's my generation. And that's my America. The real America. Okay, ready? Uh -huh. One, two, oh, 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 oh. That just kind of came out. Yeah, that's the right oh. 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 Damn, dude. Man, you should really brush your teeth. That is not normal. Hey, oh, Charlie, stop pulling your teeth out They're like that. Right me out. Well, people, this is it. This is the end of my fucking life. This is the first and last episode of The Perfect Cast. It was a fun ride, but it's about time for me to go into that good night. Time for me to die. I'm dead. I'm, I can feel my fucking body. I have, I've broken myself in a way that I didn't realize I could be broken. Let me tell you what just happened to me. Let me tell you this tragedy that just occurred in my life. An actual tragedy. And like most tragedies... This could have been avoided, but it was caused by mankind's ignorance, mankind's stupidity. And the culprit today is none other than me own mum. People, I don't know why. I don't know what otherworldly demonic entity of pure stupidity would possess a person to do something like this. But my mother likes to put candy in the freezer. You might be thinking, why the fuck would anyone do that? Why would you put candy in the freezer where it gets hard and where no one can fucking eat it? I don't know. I don't know why people do the bizarre, illogical things they do. I don't know why everyone in the world is fucking crazy but me. I have been complaining about this my whole life. I've been telling her, why do you put candy in the freezer? Nobody can eat frozen candy. And I've been complaining about this all my life because I knew that someday, somehow, somebody would pay for it. And that day has finally come. And guess who is paying for it? Take a wild fucking guess. Who is paying for somebody else's stupid mistakes like always? You guessed it. Yours truly. I open the freezer... And what do you know? There's a big sack full of Rolos. You know, Rolos, Rolo Tony Brown Town, delicious little round chocolate things with caramel inside them. Pretty delicious. At the right temperature. Not so fucking fun when they're frozen. So I think to myself, yeah, okay, I'll have a Rolo. And I put this fucking Rolo in my mouth. This frozen, rock-hard fucking Rolo. 
and I'm trying to bite into it with all my might, putting all the pressure I can on my crocodilian jaws of steel. I'm trying to bite into this fucking Rolo. And all of a sudden, I feel a pain that I've never felt before. It wasn't just the pain that made me stop, because don't get me wrong, it hurt like a bitch. But what made me stop was that it was a pain that I had never felt before. I couldn't immediately identify what the hell had gone wrong in my mouth. It wasn't a quick jolt of pain like when you chip a tooth. It wasn't a stinging sensation like when you have a cavity and something is just too sweet for it. It felt like an earthquake had gone off in my mouth. A massive seismic activity, pressure pushing down on something, almost as if my entire tooth had been pushed down back into my gums like a baby. I couldn't immediately tell what the damage was, but I knew that something had gone terribly, terribly awry. So I start poking around with my tongue, and every time I push down on my tooth with my tongue, something feels really fucking weird. It feels like the tectonic plates are shifting under each other and colliding beneath the Earth's crust. So I go into the bathroom and I turn the lights on and I try to look in the mirror. And as soon as I look at it, I can see the damage. My back tooth is like 90% filling. Because I had a lot of cavities when I was a kid, right? And I'm looking and I can see a fucking fault line all throughout my tooth. This fucking Rolo, this ungodly mistake of nature, this frozen, rock-hard Rolo has cracked my entire tooth and created a fault line all the way down where the filling meets my tooth. Right down the middle. Basically, my tooth is cracked all the way in half. Like in the land before time, when Littlefoot gets separated from his grandparents as that widening gyre opens up between them. I didn't even think that was a thing that could happen to a tooth. And every time I push down on my tooth now, it feels like it's splitting in half, and that one side of my tooth is just going to fall out or something. Or there's going to be a huge chasm in the middle, eventually, where food is going to get caught, and there's going to be roots and nerves in there that are... That are Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. Why? So thanks, Ma. I'm sure now I have to go to the fucking dentist. And God knows what the hell he's gonna do. What is the fix for this? Is there a fix for this? Am I doomed? Do they remove the tooth? Do they remove the filling and put a new filling in? Do they hold me down and squirt it with a hot glue gun to put it back together? Either way, I know they're gonna poke me with that fucking numbing stick. I fucking hate the dentist. I don't want to fucking go. Oh my god. I don't want to go to the dentist, ever. But this feels like an emergency. They're gonna fucking charge me a million fucking dollars. They're gonna fucking judge me. You know, the dentist... Dentists are always so goddamn smug. It's fucking infuriating. You go and you sit there, and they fucking look at your teeth, and they go, Oh, you don't brush enough. Your teeth are too yellow. Your teeth are too crooked. What's wrong with you? You fucking animal. You surf. You peasant. Have you no class? Have you no dignity? Why are your teeth so disgusting? I'm a dentist. I'm the fucking lord. I am the arbiter of what a person's teeth should look like. I get to judge people just because I'm a professional torturer. I hate them. I hate their fucking loud, ear-piercing goddamn drills that makes it sound like the inside of your skull is about to turn to dust because it's so shrill and high-pitched and fucking... Ugh. And my whole fucking day is shot now. My whole day is ruined. I have so much I need to fucking do and now I gotta go to the goddamn dentist and fucking... and, and have them fix this fucking... Horrible tooth situation, if it's even possible to fix it. They might just say you're fucked. They might just say it's over for you, pal. And they might take me out back and fucking put a bullet in my head. They might put me down like old Yeller. They might fucking give me the shot, the fucking, the, the sick puppy shot. They might just take all my fucking teeth out for all I know. You've heard about that? That's the thing that happens. These fucking crazy psycho dentists, you know, they put you under and they just take out all your fucking teeth. Because they're psychopaths. They're evil. They're fucking evil people. They torture people. I hate dentists. They all deserve to go to hell. Why the fuck would you put candy in the freezer? Why? Someone tell me why! So 
I'm back from the fucking dentist, and I'm fucking miserable, and I'm fucking pissed off. I can't fucking talk. I got a mouthful of gauze. The whole fucking left side of my face is numb. And oh yeah, I'm missing a fucking tooth now. So let's all gather around and have a goddamn funeral for my fucking missing tooth that crapped out on me because I decided in my infinite hubris to eat a fucking piece of candy. God forbid I try to eat a fucking Rolo out of the freezer. I didn't know that would fucking destroy the entire foundation of my life, wreak havoc on my entire goddamn skull, crack my fucking tooth right in half on the goddamn middle. Fucking shit, you know, every fucking day, I'm, I'm so pissed off, every day, it's something different. Every day it's something, you know, I wake up in, in the morning or the night or whenever the fuck I wake up, I wake up every day with this fucking list of shit that I need to do, that I need to get done, that I want to get done. And the fucking list, every day, is goddamn overwhelming as it is. There's such a fucking mountain of shit that I need to do. And I can't even get to a goddamn fucking thing. I can't accomplish a single fucking thing on my to-do list, because every day it's something. A whole nother fucking escapade that fucking launches out of the ether, comes out of nowhere, sneaks up on you in the fucking tall grass like a goddamn Pokemon trainer, and attacks you with a whole fucking army of polyworlds! You know, you wake up and there's all this shit you want to do, but then, oh no, because someone decided to put candy in the fucking freezer and make it rock hard, Suddenly I'm trying to bite into a goddamn Rolo and my fucking tooth snaps in half. Like Batman's fucking spine when he's fighting Bane. That goddamn Rolo was Bane! And my tooth was Batman! So you know, some fucking freak accident happens out of nowhere, and all of a sudden, that's your whole fucking day now. Any plans that you had, forget them. Throw them in the fucking garbage because they don't matter, and that's every fucking day. And then I gotta fucking, you know, I gotta go on the internet and deal with people going, Where, uh, Jesse doesn't make any videos anymore, where's his Jesse's videos? Yo, fuck you! Suck my goddamn dick, you cocksucking faggots! Every day it's something! Whole fucking day wasted. And now I'm sans tooth. You know, how the fuck am I supposed to get used to this? How am I ever supposed to feel normal again with this fucking glaring imperfection now? Here on the pot, here on the fucking perfect cast, a cast of perfection, now I've got this imperfection in my fucking mouth. I got a missing fucking tooth. I got a fucking hole where a tooth should be. How am I going to get used to this? How am I supposed to chew food ever again? It's going to feel weird. It's going to feel awkward having a fucking hole in my tooths. Teeths. Fuck you. I'm so fucking pissed off. You know, you go to the fucking dentist. These fucking dentists, they piss me off so much. I hate these motherfuckers. They're evil. They're pure evil. They're fucking torturers. You know, the guy says, Oh, we're, we're gonna numb you, so don't worry. You'll feel a little bit of pressure, but you won't feel any pain. Yeah, apparently no pain is dentist speak for excruciating fucking pain. An hour of excruciating pain. I'm sitting there white-knuckling the fucking chair. Tears streaming down my face. He fucking numbed me twice. He fucking loaded me up so far. Yeah, I feel like fucking Harvey Dent right now. I literally cannot. I only have one half of a face. Is how much he fucking numbed me. And it still was fucking excruciating. The word unpleasant meant nothing before today. I can't imagine a fucking worse place to be than in that fucking dentist chair. Having him yank my fucking tooth out of my fucking skull. Drilling into it. Breaking it in half, breaking it into little chunks. I can't imagine anything more, more, more horrible. That shit should, fucking dentists should be banned by the fucking Geneva Convention. I would rather be in hell. Halfway through it, I was praying to Satan, please, merciful Satan, take my soul to hell. That would be a vacation from this fucking dentist chair. From this fucking drill and this fucking scrapey thing. I would rather be anywhere. I'd rather be getting trampled by elephants in the savannah. I'd rather be getting run over with lawnmowers. I'd rather be getting fucking raped in prison. A guy could force his dick into my asshole and come inside me, and it would be more pleasant than sitting in that fucking chair, getting my tooth drilled to bits and yanked out of my fucking skull. And those fucking drills, those fucking shrill, high-pitched goddamn drills, and you can fucking hear it. You can hear it digging into your tooth. You can hear what's happening, but you can't see it, and you fucking... God damn it.
You know what my fucking fear is? My worst fear is that that fucking drill, that he'll make a mistake, and that drill will go into my fucking... into a nerve or something, and the sudden blast of pain will make my tongue leap to the side, and then my tongue will get caught in the drill, and then he'll cut through my fucking tongue and kill me, and I'll have no tongue. Like fucking ill in pain. Fucking miserable. I'm so goddamn pissed off. Now I gotta sit around with a fucking numb face. I can't film like this. I can't fucking do anything like this. I can't get anything done for fucking days now. I'm gonna be fucking conked out on painkillers. God fucking damn it. You know, every day it's something. Every, everyone fucking wants something from you. Every day there's a new fucking disaster. I have so much to fucking do. I have so much on my fucking plate right now. I'm so fucking stressed as it is, just as a fucking... You know, just in general, without this fucking shit getting in my way every day. I haven't had a fucking... I haven't had time to do a goddamn thing. I've got fucking mountains of unfinished videos that are fucking half-finished that I can't fucking get to. I was gonna make fucking My Japanese Animes videos last month. That keeps getting pushed back, because I can't fucking finish one thing even to get to the other things, because every fucking day, there's something. You know, it's fucking... It's almost like two weeks into July now. And this fucking video was supposed to be done by the beginning of June, but every fucking day there's something. Oh, go here with this person, the next day another person wants to go somewhere else, and the day after that other people want you to do something, the day after that there's a fucking emergency, the day after that your fucking tooth falls out of your head, the day after that you're fucking hopped up on painkillers for a fucking week, the day after that you got a fucking second appointment at the dentist because you gotta go back, the day after that more people want to go here, the, the, the day after that another fucking person wants you to do this. Jesus fucking Christ, I want to be left alone. I just want everyone to fuck off and die. I just want everyone to fuck off! Is that so much to ask? I just remembered I got a fucking girl visiting in a couple days who's gonna fucking come over here for a couple days. I don't even want to see her. All I want is to be left alone and finish my shit. What am I supposed to do? I'm not supposed to fucking do anything with this mouth. This fucking girl's gonna come over and I'm gonna have to eat her pussy. My stitches are gonna fucking fall out and get caught in her cunt hairs. Fucking ridiculous. I'm so sick of people. I'm so sick of every fucking person you even fucking look at has got to fucking talk to. Every fucking person, everyone you talk to has got to be 20 fucking questions. I'm so sick of talking to people. I'm so sick of seeing people. I'm so sick of people wanting me to do shit. I'm so sick of shit going wrong. I'm so sick of fucking disaster at every turn. Everywhere I turn, there's some new fucking piece of shit that's got to take up my whole goddamn day. You know, I really didn't think that I would end this day with a, with a missing fucking tooth and a numb face. When I woke up this morning, I didn't think this would be my fucking day. For fuck's sake. Every fucking day. There's some bullshit I gotta deal with. All I wanna fucking do is be left alone. That's my whole philosophy on life. Like, people don't understand how much conviction I have when I say this. I want everyone to just fuck off. Is that so much to ask for? You know, that's why I'm so proud of that, that shut up and fuck off video I did a couple weeks ago. It's such a dumb video, but it's so true. It's my whole fucking feelings on this entire world, on the whole human race. It applies to everything. Please, everybody, shut up and fuck off. Leave me alone. Anything you want from me, anything you fucking think you have to say, anything you think I need to do, please take all of it and shove it. Eat shit and die. Everyone, fuck off and leave me alone. I feel like the Incredible Hulk. I just want to be left alone. But Tony Stark's always bothering me. Captain America's always fucking knocking on my door, asking for a favor. Is, is, is it any wonder that I fucking go ape shit and tear up a city? Is it any wonder why every once in a while I gotta level the fucking building or throw a tank over the harbor? I'm so sick of bullshit. My only goal in life is to be left alone by everyone forever. I don't think that's asking a lot. You know, I'm not antisocial. I like fucking hanging out with my friends. I'm not complaining about it, but Jesus fucking Christ, every fucking day, it's a different person. Every fucking day, it's a different activity, a different place. And even on the days when it's no one, the days that, by all rights, should be just for me, when I finally have a day when I can be you know, by myself in solitude, working on my shit, finally getting shit done, even when a day like that finally comes, what happens? Some fucking freak accident and I end up in a fucking dentist chair getting ripped apart by drills. Fan-fucking-tastic. There's no goddamn escape. 
I want the fucking world to end. I want everyone dead. I want everyone to fuck off forever. I want no one to fucking talk to me. I want no one to expect me to go anywhere or do anything. This is the true fucking rage, people. They took everything from me. They took my time. They took my productivity. They took my fucking tooth out of my skull. And all I have left is hate! <laughs> I feel like I'm fucking Ray Ayanami. All I want to do is play Donkey Kong and listen to Dick Masterson, but Gendo keeps sticking me in the fucking Ava every day. Every time Shinji wusses out. Every time Asuka has a fucking mental breakdown and gets her ass kicked and ends up in a fucking psycho ward. Who do they send in as backup? Who do they send in as the fucking substitute? Yours truly. So I gotta go in the fucking Ava and get my ass kicked and end up in the fucking hospital because I'm seen as expendable all my fucking life. All I wanted to do was relax and get my shit done. All I wanted to do was take care of business. But they keep fucking making me pilot the Ava. They keep making me hold the world on my shoulders like I'm the fucking chosen one just because I'm some half-alien abomination freak that they made in a fucking lab. I didn't ask to be born, people. I didn't ask to be a half-human monstrosity. All I want to do is go to school and read my books and be left alone and have my fucking period like a normal girl. But I can't even do that. Because they've had me on fucking medication since I was five. Every fucking week of my life, Dr. Akagi hands me a plastic baggie full of unmarked pills, unlabeled fucking drugs that they gotta pump into my fucking system for what purpose? I have no fucking earthly idea. Every fucking week of my life, they shove these fucking unlabeled pills down my gullet ever since I was fucking five years old. And before that, her fucking whore cow mother used to do it to me too. My whole fucking life I've been a goddamn guinea pig. Nobody gives a fuck about my feelings. Everybody's a fucking asshole. Asuka's a bitch. Gendo, he don't care about me. He acts like he care about me. He don't care about me. He only cares about his fucking schemes and machinations. I'm just a goddamn pawn to him. I'm just a fucking piece to his puzzle. Shinji's fucked up. He's all... I don't know what the fuck his deal is. He's just a whiny little testicle. Acting like his problems are so bad, goddammit. I'm the one everybody wants something from. All I want to do is play Donkey Kong. But every day it's something. Nobody cares about me. Misato doesn't fucking care about me. She acts all motherly with you two little fucking brats. She only cares about you. She only cares about her kids. Well, what about me? What about Ray? Everybody sucks. Fuyutsuki's creepy and old. He's always looking at my ass. I think he's a fucking hebophile. Well, he ain't getting none of this. I bet they're all a bunch of fucking creeps. I bet they all fucking sit in that room with all my clones in the damn spank tank. They fucking take their pants off and jerk each other off looking at all my naked clone bodies. Sick fucking freaks. And people look at me like I'm the weirdo. Just because I'm quiet. Just because I don't flip out and have a fucking nervous breakdown every three seconds like everybody else in this fucked up world. Just because I'm not a needy little fucking piss ant. Just because I can entertain myself. Just because I can take care of myself. Just because I'm self-reliant, unlike everyone else. Just because I might not want to fucking talk to everybody all the fucking time. You know, excuse me for not being a chatty Kathy like everyone else. For not being a fucking gossip whore, small talking motherfucker. You know, maybe I just don't like talking to you people. Maybe the problem is not me. Maybe the problem is you. Maybe you're all annoying. Maybe I got a lot on my fucking mind. You know, being half alien and all. Being a fucking clone. Being a fucking freak of nature. Being a fucking pawn in a madman's apocalyptic schemes. Maybe I'm under a lot of pressure. Maybe I'm under a lot of stress. Maybe I don't need the 20 fucking questions from everybody all the goddamn time. Maybe I don't give a shit about your fucking problems. Maybe I got problems of my own. What about Ray? You know, I spend my whole fucking life in a lab. Being pumped full of medications. Being subjected to humiliating physical examinations. 
being conditioned to view myself as an expendable object, having all sense of self-worth and self-respect conditioned out of me, being put in a fucking hundred foot tall walking death machine and told to fight monsters, and then being told that I'm basically not even a real human because I'm basically one of those monsters. My fucking DNA is half Lovecraftian horror and half the genetic leftovers of some dead bitch I ain't ever even met. And every time my creepy ass father figure looks at me, I know he's just picturing my perky titties. He's undressing me with his eyes. He's picturing what he would do to me, what he would do to my body, because I remind him of his stupid dead wife, his stupid dead bitch wife. But I ain't got nowhere to fucking go. I ain't got no fucking choice. This is my lot in life. So I fucking grin and bear it. I fucking humor the old man. I fucking tell him about my day. What does he need to know about my day anyway? He don't let me go anywhere. Except to fucking school and back. I ain't got nothing in my goddamn apartment. I live in an empty fucking room. The only decoration is the bloody fucking gauze. From every fucking day he's gotta stick me in that robot. So I can get beat up by more monsters. You know, next thing I know, fucking Shinji shows up and I start thinking, you know, maybe I can finally make a friend. Maybe my life can, you know, maybe I can finally, you know, come out of my shell a little bit. Maybe I can have, you know, some acquaintances. But then the fucking redhead shows up and she's just a fucking cunt. She's always giving me shit. I don't know what the fuck her problem is. But she's fucking useless. Every fucking battle she's trying to show off. She's getting her ass fucking incapacitated and then I have to do all the heavy lifting. I'm still getting my ass beat. I got two other pilots backing me up now, but they're both fucking useless. So I'm still getting my ass beat and having to save the day every fucking battle. Shinji always pussies out like a little bitch. Oscar just hops from one mental breakdown to the next. Next thing I know, I'm in a fucking battle. They both get ripped to shit. And I gotta fucking blow myself up. Now I'm dead. I'm fucking dead. Now I'm a fucking clone. I'm replacing myself. They fucking fished another of me out of the goddamn spank tank. My memories are all fucking fuzzy. I can feel myself losing the sense of identity that I worked so hard to fucking build up. And now this fucking creepy little gay boy shows up. This little sweet boy. This little shit shirt shows up. Trying to make a fucking rift between me and my boy. Trying to fucking seduce my boy. Trying to lure him over to the side of evil and turn him into a gay. Trying to get in his pants. I say, fuck you. I know you're not even a person. You're a monster. I'm gonna fucking kill you. That little, that little bitch boy fucked off. Thank God. Next thing I know, old man Gendo is fucking ready for me to blow up the world so he can fuck his stupid bitch corpse of a wife. And at this point, I just fucking had it. You know, I'm like, fuck you. Suck a dick. He puts his fucking hand on my tit. I say, oh, hell nah. I cut off his fucking hand. I float up to the angel. I turn giant. He fucking lays there and dies. He looks up at me. He says, why you betrayed me? I go, I'm Donkey Kong, motherfucker. And I step on him. Fuck them. Fuck them all. There's a line, people, and at a certain point they crossed it. Rei Ayanami has had just about enough of everybody's bullshit. I blow up the whole world. I kill everybody. I send them all to hell. I turn them into goo. And then because I'm so goddamn nice out of the kindness of my heart, I go ahead and put my horrible friends back to life. I put them on the beach. I let them live. Because I'm a nice, I'm a nice gal. I'm self-sacrificing like that. I'm always looking out for everybody. I'm always looking out for my friends. I'm always... But nobody sees that. Nobody appreciates what I do. Nobody appreciates what Ray do. So you know what? Fuck it. I just fucking died. I'm standing there. My fucking head just falls off. Because I don't give a shit anymore. Fuck it. My name is Ray Ayanami. And I want the whole world to shut up and fuck off. You talk too much. Never shut up. I said you talk too much. Hope oh you never shut up. Well, everybody, that does it for the first episode of The Perfect Cast. I hope everybody had fun. I hope everybody learned something. I know I didn't learn anything. I learned the world is shit, but I already fucking knew that. The only thing pure in this world is Pokemon, but I already knew that too. Pokemon and Donkey Kong. 
To everybody who hates me, kiss my ass and suck my dick, go to hell and eat my shit, and to everybody who likes me, whatever. Fuck you too. Fuck all of you. Just fuck off. Everyone, fuck off. That's the perfect cast, and I'll see you next Tuesday. Woo! In this